couple observations right away is one, I should probably lay off the cheeseburgers and two, I probably should go through my bathroom closet and find my razor. Wow. Wow. That's bad. Woo. Anyways, here we are. Looks like I'm framed up good. So I got to get the jitters out because whenever I do a live video, I, I get the jitters. And uh, <clears throat> once I get that all squared away, my plan is to show you um, the way that I assemble a uh a post-war, uh, post, 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 post-war M1. So these are the last pattern M1 helmets that they made or contracted for in the late 70s and into the 80s. And kind of a funny helmet because they're not highly desirable. They're more, they're actually more, in my opinion, more functional um, than a World War II helmet. They're not as sexy. I know you guys that wore one, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Um, but I sell a lot of these, and I think because the, the price point is, is easy on the pocketbook, and they're, they're actually pretty functional, and um, they're quirky because they don't always fit well together. And as you know, I'm doing this live without a net, so I'll probably repeat myself a million times, but here's a post-war helmet steel helmet and here's the liner no guts nice paint okay and the two nest together so that I get this question a lot and um, you know it's what size what size helmet should I get well the M1 helmet is virtually one size fits all I've only met two maybe three people in my whole life who had a really big melon and could not wear a helmet and I said, well, you're in luck because you would have probably gotten a farm deferment and would not have been drafted. But as you can see, the fit on these is different. So on a World War II helmet, almost always the liner just drops in. On these, the backside stands off a lot. And just this last Sunday, uh, we posted a, a big red blog where he addresses this very problem here it's not really even a problem it's just a thing so depending on the tolerances that the uh, liner manufacturer went with and the tolerances that the helmet manufacturer went with you're gonna have sometimes gonna have a liner that stands up out of the back like this this doesn't look that bad once I introduce the helmet cover it'll probably get a little bit worse. I hate using the word worse because it's not a bad thing. It's just part of the era. It's one of the quirks of the helmet. So let's, this is another one. Let's see how this one, here's another liner. Let's see how this one goes. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. And this one, this one here is going to be fun because watch this. All right. So this one, we don't have that problem. I really have to shake it. And then let's see how this one, here's the third one. Let's see how this one goes. And then here's the third liner. So I can see, oh, look at this, look at this bad boy really standing up there. Oh, if I put a little force on that, it stays in there pretty good. Okay. Uh, as far as I've learned, because I read the Big Red blog, by the way, the Big Red blog, if you go to my page and scroll through the, the posts I've made, I think Big Red is going to be easy to find because he's only like two posts lower than this video. So if you want to read about um, some of the Arsenal reports and some of the research that went into um, these check out the big red blog because it's fresh it's fresh in my mind too and <laughs> the big red i got i got a confession to make the, the big red blog is actually a, a result of somebody sending me a nasty email saying that um <laughs> they're never gonna buy another helmet from me again ever uh because my helmets are crap and they don't stay together 
and they're impossible to wear without them falling apart. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, you know, if someone says that about one of my helmets, I'm immediately like, what? So come to find out that the helmet that this individual purchased was one of these post-war helmets. And it was 100% GI. And I, I'm like, well, you know, I assembled it and I shipped it to you, but I didn't make it. Um, all the parts are original and it's like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like good enough for the army, but not good enough for this fella. So <clears throat> I tried to help him through and some people just like to be nasty. What are you going to do? But we're not going to dwell on that. It just, in, instead of like, instead of like going, you know, crazy and getting all angry and like getting all Irish and throwing things because that's happened. Um, I decided to be like, well, why? Why Why are some of these helmets the way they are? And again, here we are live. That's what the big red blog was all about, is why the ill fit. So here we are, let's do something. Let's do something fun. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the steel helmet. Um, best as I can tell from about 1980 on, maybe 78, somewhere right around there. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I know enough about these to be really dangerous. I don't know enough about them to be an expert um, of this era per se. So a lot of you probably know a lot more than me. Um, I just handled a lot of them, hundreds. Um, not too long ago, I bought like almost 2,000 of these bad boys. And, and so, I mean, I've handled a lot of them. I've never put a lot of effort into studying. So I'm, I'm learning about them. And uh, I've, I used to despise these chin straps, but now I actually can appreciate them um, because they act a lot like a chin cup. So, and the, and the neat thing is, is, is if they fail, you just go like this and you know, you get yourself a new one. No tools required. Again, um, they're not sexy like a World War II or Korean or Vietnam era helmet, but I would, I would argue to say as far as function, they're probably better. So the, the, once they go on, then this comes around and snaps. And then when it sits on your head, this, actually sits on your chin and then you can undo this cam and you can tighten them down and that prevents the wobble and it prevents the um, liner separation. So that was a direct regurgitation of the blog. I'm going to try and... So here, the helmet's done. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you is how to put a helmet cover on it. I know this is all like pretty basic stuff to a lot of us, but I do get a lot of people who ask. So here we are. The biggest thing is, how do I get the helmet cover on there so that it like looks cool, so it's tight and doesn't look like a swim cap or or a, um, what are those, you know, like a shower cap, like, you know, sometimes you're in a hotel and they've got the little things on the counter and there's like a shower cap. How do you get it to not look like a shower cap? Well, I do a couple things. One, I know we all like to run really fast, so one of the things you can do um, when you put on a helmet cover is see these little uh, creases, okay? If you put the helmet cover on your helmet um, this way, so when you run, air doesn't get in here and slow you down. Because you know, you can get air in here to slow you down. So if you're a really fast runner and you want to run even faster, you turn your helmet cover this way because then the air just passes right over the top and doesn't get caught in there. You follow me? Do you think I'm trying to be funny? Maybe. Anyways, I do. I put these, um, I put these creases to the back. And, and I'm gonna tell you something. If, if this slows you down when you're running, then <clears throat> just like to put a little something in there to make you wonder, like, man, is he being serious? So, anyways, what I do with the helmet cover is I, I don't worry about it getting pretty right away. I just get it on the helmet. What I do 
is I try and center this um, pleat right on the top like this and I just kind of pull the sides down a little bit and then I like to make sure that this that this um, um, seam is kind of running down from the center to the front in a nice straight way because it'll look pretty when we snug this thing down. Same with the back, I've got this running. Does this stuff like matter? No, but we like things to look nice. Another thing is, is I like to have this right around where the chin strap is gonna come up and out. So I like to get that there. And then the last thing I do is I just check to make sure that this is kind of touching the table and this is, that way I know I'm good. Now the next, what I do next is I take my cat eye band and I use this to help me get this cover on. So I gotta lean on it. Okay, I gotta lean my, lean my cheeseburger gut down on that a little bit. All right, got the cat eyes in the back. And then, you, and then what I do is I just start to snug down the flaps like this. And while I'm doing that, I like to pull all the creases out. Pulling this down, getting all the creases out. See how that elastic band is like your best friend? Because it's holding everything down for you real nice. No fuss, no muss. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, and then I like to turn it over. I just drop the flaps in like so. It looks like a lot of material in there, and it is. Then I take the chin strap and I bring it out. Now, some people will like to cut a slit in here. I really discourage that. You don't wanna put any unnecessary holes in your helmet cover. This system, by the way, works even for the uh, Vietnam era Mitchell cover. So if that's what you have, or that's what you're into, okay, so here we have it. What I like to do now is I will take the chin strap around the back of the helmet, and as you can see, it's not gonna make it. So what I do is I, I undo this cam lever, and I lengthen this. So nice snap it back on there like that this is pretty slick and then I'm gonna check again eh, it's still not so I'm gonna lengthen this side okay awkward silence yeah I think that's probably gonna be it then I like to go and snap this back on there. So you can see I lengthen this. Now if you're gonna run around with the helmets like GI style around the back, around the back like this, you wanna lengthen those. But if you're gonna wear the chin strap, then you're gonna wanna snug it down. But you do that once you're wearing it on your head. Okay, here, I'm gonna snap that. So now I've got the chin strap around the back. And I don't know, I just like the way it looks. Honestly, I kind of like the way it ships. Okay, so as you can see, this is down on here pretty good. Let's get that helmet liner in here and see what happens. Okay, here we go. So I like to drop the back in and then I like to force the front down. So do you see how I did that? Okay, what I like to do is I get all the flaps in and I like to set the back in and then I like to force the front down. And there you go. Now remember that that was ill-fitting before. I was able to kind of just mash it all and now we've got that friction between the liner body, the cover, and the helmet body and it snugs it all real nice.
I'm gonna let my video catch up because I one I want to see how much of a delay I'm on and two I kind of want to see what this oh look at that hey that looks nice yeah, I'm down with that okay so there see that's how I assembled I call these a Grenada era helmet and the reason I the reason I call them that um, you know, they, they weren't specific to that conflict, but it's just the era. You know, that that like 80, 81, 82, 83, the Grenada era. And that's why I call them that. Um, because, you know, you need to have a title. I got to have a title for, for when I list these, and that's just what I've chosen to do. So I'm going to move on. Um, I, I, I thought I would be able to read the comments on my other screen, but I can't see them. Uh oh, I apologize. I can't see that. I can see there's quite a few of them, but I can't see them close enough to read them. So once I end the video, I'll go back through, and if there's anything pertinent in there, I will address it. Okay. So here's a here's another thing that's interesting. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> My CD player was skipping. It was bothering me. Okay, so here we are. One of the other interesting things about this particular helmet liner, this is without a web kit and this is with. These web kits they have like a snap and they they pop they pop right out just like this so again it's not as sexy as a world war ii helmet but i'll tell you as far as function how many web kits have you had that have failed and then the liners also failed right well this alleviates some of that so if this, come on, if this web kit, gets greasy or heavily soiled or torn, it just comes right out. And you can see that it has these clips and then it has these discs. So it's kind of nice because if, you, if you're using this and you wear it out, you can just replace it. Excuse me. So, excuse me again. So what I like to do, actually, and, and this, there's a lot going on, I know. There's a lot going on with assembling this helmet, but here's another thing about these helmets that gets me a little bit nuts. And that is, and those, those guys, if you have a Vietnam era helmet, well, like this one, oh, that's, that's, If you have a Vietnam era helmet like this, these are, these are basically, they set up exactly the same. It's just this kit is, is riveted in with the washers and this one is not. But one of the things that you're gonna, that you're gonna um, immediately identify with me on is trying to put this three point neck band into the helmet liner on a Nam Air liner. It's crazy. It takes forever. You can't get your fingers in there to get on these buckles to slide the webbing on. So one of the things I really like about these is I put this on first. So I'm gonna try and do this backwards. It's not gonna be easy. I have this back buckle. And what I like to do is I like to hold the buckle under my finger, I'm just gonna give you a mock. I like to hold the buckle like this. And there, you can see on this buckle, there's a raised part. And then the raised part facing towards the liner body has like four little teeth. So I, what I do is I play a game with myself and I, and I have the teeth up and towards the liner body and then I take this, 
I take the center and I go down through the teeth. So down through the teeth, up through the smooth part. Then when you tip the liner down, did I do that wrong? I might have, hang on a minute. Let me do the side first. So let me let me play let me let me sing my little song here. Down through the teeth, up through the smooth part. The the buckle or the slider has a, a smooth side, and that's what I mean. The reason you're not seeing this is because I can't do this backwards. So here we go. Then if you set this up right, it's not right. I can't believe this. You know, I, I thought to myself about practicing first and I thought, nah, I'm just gonna go for it because these are these are the things that I feel in emails and in messages, so I'm starting over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this liner and I'm just gonna look at it. Okay. I did that exactly backwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, okay. Now I know what I'm doing. I've got the buckle laying against the liner body. And instead of going down through the teeth from the back side, I'm gonna go through the teeth from the front. That's what I was doing wrong. So I'm gonna try and do this so that you can see a little bit here, but I'll give you a close up here in a second. So I'm going with this. I'm going through the teeth first from the outside, then up through the smooth part, and that's what's going to give me the lockdown. So that when you when you um, tug on this now, so here's what I did. You veterans, you laughing at me? I know that, and I, I'm fine with it. But I do, I get a lot of questions on, you know, hey, I've, I've got this all adjusted up, but it doesn't sit snug, it, it releases itself. And it's just because you have to get this just right. Now watch, when I, when I, let's say this is my neck, and when I'm bouncing through the feel, see, it's, it's, it's locked in because now the tension is hitting those teeth first. And that's, that's not coming out of there. Okay, so I did that right. Yay. Now. Remember what I was talking about? Imagine what I just did when I'm fumbling around with that and, and having a hard time. Imagine doing that now on this liner and you can't get your fingers in there because this webbing is in the way because you can't remove it. So that's one of the things I really like about this, this helmet liner is you can put this neck band in first. All right, so let's do the other side. So I remember now from the outside, I'm gonna hit those, I'm gonna hit the teeth first on the buckle. You can see I'm getting kinda, of, it's kinda of weird because like I'm one of those guys like I can't do tight places, like I can't go in caves. Um, I'm, I'm really bad on submarine tours, oh my God, you should see me sweating bullets if I tour a sub. <laughs> so it's weird because when I'm doing this, I can actually feel that like weird tight space um, squirm. It's kind of funny, but anyways, I got that side a lot faster. So um, because we have good orientation on um, front facing camera, you can see what I see. What I do with that neck band tab is I go, I lay the buckle against the liner body and I go, I go into it like this through the teeth, through the smooth part and then that way when you when you when your neck is putting pressure on this it doesn't come loose so let me get the back part through the teeth I've been telling myself now through the teeth so I went I went um, through the teeth and then I'm gonna go up through the smooth part And then I have that tight. 
pack. So that one's nice and tight too. So now when you put this, so this is nice because when you, oh, the liner comes out, but it's in there good. Okay, now let's get that web kit put back in there. And I'll show you how to do that. So the web kit is interesting too because, you know, and again, a lot of fellows don't know this because you can't see it. You see, you can't see it. But if you turn this web kit inside out, there's a buckle here, a buckle there, and a buckle there. Hang on. And what these are for is if you have a large melon like I do, you can loosen these up. And you can get a really, really good fit with this particular web kit. So again, um, I've sold quite a few of these and then um, you get the call a little bit later that, well, the liner doesn't fit my head that good. And, I'm, and I said, well, you know, you can adjust it. Really? And I'm like, yeah, just turn this thing inside out and you can see that that has those three buckles, which, you know, you can't really see them when you orientate this thing in the helmet liner. So the buckles go to the rear of the liner and it's pretty obvious because there's three. So you just split the three across the back here. And what I do is I'll go at the middle one. And did you hear that snap? So you know you've got a good seat on that clip. I'll show you one of these in a second when you hear that little snap. So, there it went, and there it went. Okay, so now I'm going to do the front. So you take this, you've got that disc, and it just slides down on there like that, and then sometimes you just have to give it like a little... There it went, you can hear that snap. The sides sometimes can be a little bit of a work because the tension is starting to, it's starting to create the tension of the helmet liner from, from being seated on all six points. And let's get that, there. All right. So now you've got your web kit in there. All right, we've got our cover, got our chin strap, got our elastic band everything's looking good nice and tight flip her over we've got one more thing and that's the headband okay headband or sweatband if you want to be super technical it's a headband but sweatband is common common um, lingo just a minute back okay I like to just loosen this up just a little bit before I put it in the helmet liner now here's the fun thing the headband has these six clips two of them have teeth and then the other four do not they're smooth and again that is just an improvement overall because I I'm sure that somebody was like man do we really need to have six tooth spring clips because it chews up the, the um, web kit so you do need you do need at least the two because it keeps it from pivoting when this is on your on your when your head is in here and then it doesn't do one of you know it doesn't rock back and forth on the webbing but you don't need six because then it's just less wear and tear this one's actually behaving itself sometimes these are really tight and you're just like oh my god you gotta get like pliers to, to get these to unsnap but this is just a spring clip and you just just like that so that's how it works and you just have to be able to do that on the back side of this once you throw it on here so here's how this works um, I'm not gonna do this because I don't want to I don't want to get my my greasy head on this but what I recommend is you just take this thing off the helmet, 
put it on your head and then adjust it so that it fits well. Then take it off your head and put it in the helmet liner. Then you're gonna be really close to having this thing fit. Cause if you're, if you're, and, and again, even with World War II, Korea, Vietnam, all the reenactors, you know, you've all seen it and maybe you suffer from it, but the bobblehead syndrome, and there's nothing more hilarious so you can see how I snap that in. There's nothing more hilarious to me than watching the reenactor run across the field with his M1 in one hand holding his helmet with the other because it's ill-fitting and it bobbles. If your helmet is adjusted properly, no matter what era, you should actually be able to do a handstand and your helmet will stay on your head. And one of the things I, I do when I'm at shows and I can and I can meet and greet with everybody is, you know, I, guys will come to me and I'll help them get their get the fit just right. Um, and then and then uh, I know the last big show we were at, I actually had a guy come to me after the battle and he was really happy because he said for the first time ever he didn't have the bobblehead. Okay, so here's the headband is in place. Now it looks like something. So there you have it. There's the Grenada era um, M1 helmet or, or the last pattern. This is right before, um, I don't have one. No, I thought I did. I don't have a, a PAS GT. But this is, this is the M1 helmet. This is, this is the last hurrah for this helmet style. Um, because we went with the Kevlar. And so that's it. There it is. And you can see the liner does the liner does pop out the back a lot, but that is not bad. That's not bad. That's totally what I actually would expect. And there you have it. I Man, there's some great comments over there. Tell you what we'll do. I'll end the video and I'm going to buzz through those comments. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stand here. I'll wait for the delay. Because again, as per usual, I am run really, really long. And I apologize because, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't hang out with anybody. So when I get to hang out with you guys, I get a little chatty. I have two more I have to assemble. So if you want, if, if I'm not even sure how many people are tuning in or who even cares, but if you want, I'll do the other two and I'll talk less and I'll just kind of do it if you want to see that. Otherwise, I can end this. Um, regardless, I'll answer comments after the fact. But if you, if you want to watch me kind of like do a speed run through these, um, just hit like the love button or <laughs> something. Oh, my God. Not that one. The heart. The heart button, you idiot just we like doo, 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 you know and then that way i'll be like yeah okay you guys want to see it otherwise i'll sign off and um holy cow and uh we'll do something else there's one so that uh, it's about a 10 second delay up uh, two come on now who's spamming that i want to see some spam <laughs> do you ever do that when you're watching a live feed and you're just like bam, 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 bam. And you just float the hearts or float the thumbs up like and they're just they're just doing I do that like if I'm watching a concert or something and like the band is playing something super hot and I'll just be like bam, 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 bam. Yeah there that whoever's doing that that's what I'm talking about <laughs> Anyways let me set this off to the side and I'm gonna kinda cheat. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my items out. This one I actually, this one here I actually have sold, um, and the other two that I'm gonna do, um, they they sold as well. I'm not I'm not giving I'm not doing the commercial thing. I'm just saying this, one of the reasons I decided to do the live stream. There's a couple. One I sold three of these, and two I I, I literally just posted a big red blog about this exact same helmet. So once again. Go back into our Facebook 
page in like two posts ago, which would have been Sunday night, um, you can read all about this helmet and what it's all about and some of the oddities in it. And I, I don't know, it's one of my, it's one of, one of my, um, uh, it's one of the blogs that I've read by Big Red that kind of helped me out the most. And one, it was it was the the idea behind the blog was what came about because I had someone who was who who purchased one of these and received it in the mail and was not happy um, that their helmet liner stuck out the back like that. And so I asked myself, why? Well, why are you unhappy? Obviously, but why does this? You know why? Why are you gonna go through all the effort of manufacturing combat headgear? I even was like thinking to myself, you know, maybe it's because this creates a gap. Like if you get a bullet through here, it'll just ride up, ride around the top of the liner and out. It creates like an airspace. And I'm like, nah, that's like one of those thoughts you have when you've had way too much coffee. But the reason that this stands up like this, I found out, is because there's a minimum and maximum tolerance to the helmet body, and there's a minimum and maximum tolerance to the liner body. So if you get a helmet that's built to the maximum, and you get a liner that's built to the minimum, the liner is going to drop right out of the helmet when you turn it this way. Likewise, if you have a helmet that's built to the minimum, and a liner that's built to the minimum, they're not gonna fit well together. And I thought, that's a real thing. So I was like, cool. So now when I get crabby people, I'm just gonna have them read the block. <laughs> Anyways, all right, you ready? Okay, so here's the helmet. I'm gonna start with the helmet, get my chin strap out. Did we, did we, did we decide we wanna do this? Okay. All right, so in a perfect world, let's see what happens here. So short side of the chin strap, no tools required. It just angles on. Come on now. Oh boy. It's gonna make me work for it right away. Nope, not that one. Not that one, boys and girls. That's the beauty of having like 500 of these is you can just toss one to the side and go for the next one. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Not that one either. Let me get some more. Where'd they go? Here they are. That's fine when I can get on. So, so far, if I was in the army, I would definitely be a private because I would get busted all the time for something. And then my job would be is putting the chin straps on for the whole company. You know what? That would have been my job. Private Murray. Actually, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have even given you the. Uh, they wouldn't. Have, they wouldn't have even got to the Murray part. It would have just been private. <laughs> I know this to be true, people. Okay, for all you speed runners out there, when you're putting the cover on, you wanna put the pleats to the back, because if you have the pleats to the front, they catch air and slows you down when you're running. So that's why you put the pleats behind you. So I'm gonna put the cover on, I'm gonna put the cat eye band on, Throw your gut into it a little bit. Cinch. Oh, this one's got some serious adjustments here I need to do. I can tell that already. I'm gonna have a flap in. Eh, I think I'm gonna redo that one. I didn't follow my own teaching. Take the time to get that looking nice from the start, Murray. Let's do that again.
One of the things I've noticed with M1 helmet, the M1 helmet and, and guys and girls who love M1 helmets is helmet covers and helmet nets become the most frustrating part of the assembly process But this elastic band, man, I'm telling you, the elastic band is a lifesaver. It really, really helps. Okay, so now I'm putting the flaps of the helmet cover inside the helmet. I'm going to go full GI. Around, oh, I need to loosen this up because I can tell right now it's not going to cinch in the back. I'm going to go full classic GI look. And I want to snap this around the back. Really? Nothing like fighting for something on live TV. Whew. All right. There's that. Okay. So that's ready. Set that to the side. We're going to do this neck band. And if I can remember my own teaching, we go from the outside. With the buckle up, we go through the teeth. Come on. Come on. Through the teeth, up a little bit. Through the flat. Beautiful. Okay, next one. So here's the buckle. Here's the uh, three-point end. So we are going to go from the outside. We're going to go through the teeth, up the back side, and then we're going to go out the smooth part. So remember that. That's important because if you do it backwards, see how I can't, I can't get that to release? If I do this wrong, you can go and you can just pull this right apart. Remember that. That's important. Okay, so flip the buck. So the buckle a lot of times is laying down. Flip the buckle up. Take the tab. Go through the teeth from the outside. I have to turn this. Sorry, I'm lefty. Through the teeth from the outside. Up a little bit with the with the tab in, and then through the flat. And then it snugs up, nice and snug. Okay, that's in. Now we're gonna fumble around with this web kit a little bit. This is a super fresh web kit. Um, <clears throat> and, and when they're when they're when they've never been in a helmet liner, they can be a little bit of a trick. Hear that snap? So this clip goes on this disc. And you wanna you wanna, you know, I've done a lot of these. So there you hear the snap that's how you know you're seated I've done a lot of these one of the things you're probably wondering is why don't you just use your thumbs and push down like this I'll tell you why because if you're if you, if this thing slips off and your thumb hits this disc and that thing goes into your nail <sighs> I'm just gonna say it it sucks like this, okay? You don't wanna do that. That's why you don't see me doing that is because guess what? Been there, done that. I got the t-shirt on that one. It sucks. So you're almost always gonna see me try to find some other way, come on now, to get that to seat down, there we go, without using my thumbs. Come on. There. There it went. Okay, there's the liner. I'm going to throw this in here. Okay, what I like to do is I like to set the back and push down the front. See how that one stands up like that? I'm going to try again just to get it to look a little more pretty. I'm going to start by un making sure that is many of these pleats in the cover are out as possible 
Okay, that helps. So I'm gonna put in the rear of the liner and I'm gonna push down the front. That's better. That's what it was. I had too many pleats in the helmet cover. Okay, so that's better. Next, headband. Wait, I already did this one. So there's six clips. One, two, three, four. It's really weird standing here by myself in the shop talking to a phone. So, I don't know, I just pretend like I'm like in a lecture, a lecture, and uh, it helps. You know, and it's funny too because you do a couple live videos and you just kind of get used to making an ass of yourself and then it just gets easier. All right, that's it. I'm not gonna put this on because it's kind of warm in here today and I'm a little sweaty and I don't wanna sweat up the headband, but there. So, properly adjusted, you should be able to do a handstand and this helmet will stay on your head. There you go, there's another one. You barred yet? I'll keep going if you want. I have one more to do. Actually, I have a Vietnam helmet to assemble after I'm done with this one. Um, what I really want is just like waiting for that one person who's like, who gives zero Fs and is like, yeah, dude, I don't want to watch you do this anymore. <laughs> and then... And then the funny thing is, is they get me to hang up and they don't just hang up, right? It's like, well, if you don't want to watch, then leave, right? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I can't read my own. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Heck with it. It's already been like 10 million hours, so it's another million hours, right? What I'll do when I'm done with this is I'll post it, and uh, that way you can watch it later. So again, I like to take the short side of this chin strap, and we're going to just cinch that down just a little bit. Okay, oh, we got a bale that's got a little twist in it, so that'll be interesting. Let's go. Come on. Nope. This one needs repair. Let's go over here. Oh, you didn't hear that. Let's get another one. There's lots of things. I'm gonna get another chin strap. There's a lot of things with these helmets, you know, like these are all unissued. When I, I purchased these years ago, some of you might remember, these all came out of New Mexico. And like they've never they've never been used. And but they're not perfect either. It's like I don't know, maybe someone dropped it on the factory floor before they put it in the box. I have no idea. But it's amazing when you get all these unissued helmets. And um, it's not easy to find a perfect helmet. I mean, that's just what I'm trying to get at. You would think, you know, you see like, oh, there's a stack of helmets. It's all, they're all still in the paper. Woo! And then you start going through them and you're like, Mm. Like here, look at totally unissued helmet, and this is Kitty Wampus. Got me. Let's see. There. So there, there's me putting. I call these, I call these the angled chin straps, and it has nothing to do with anything other than it's my own shop terminology. The reason I call them angled is because when you put them on, you have to hold them at an angle and then and then reef them onto the bale. It's the only reason I call it that. It's like 
someone will call me on the phone and they're like, yeah, I'm looking for those chin straps that just, that just cl clamp on. And I'm like, you mean the ones that angle on there? Yeah, yeah, those. So just what I call them. Talk, 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 talk. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Get this thing. So again, I'm centering this. I'm getting the pleat right on the top of the dome. I'm kind of giving it a look down. Looks pretty good. Okay. Then I like to get the elastic band out. Throw the cheeseburger into it. That's why I call this my cheeseburger. Okay. Looking good. Oh, it's all like, yeah. See, it's all shower cap looking. We're going to fix that. Pull the flaps nice and snug. While I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, it's kind of second nature, but I'm also looking for creases in the fabric. I like to have those pulled out of there so it looks pretty. Let's get this down here. Okay, looking good. See this? I like to get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Okay. I throw all the flaps inside. Get the chin straps to the outside of the helmet. Come on now, get up under here. Like this. You know, if helmets be an issue to the unit, you know full well. You know full well. You had your guys, you're like, you know what you're really good at? You're really good at peeling potatoes. And then some other, you know, some sergeant's like, you know what, private, you know what you're really good at? putting helmets together and that definitely would have been me and then and I'd be like I'm not good at it and then they look at you and they're like no you're not but you will be <laughs> and then 120 helmets later you know you know what you're doing okay so there it's all looking nice get those flat back in Front to back, I like to go back to front. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. So another thing you can do, I'm gonna set this over here, is you can take it and go. There, I'll leave that right there for a second. Uh, before I put in the kit though, I wanna do the three point. So again, I'm gonna slow down just for a second. But if you have a wet, if you have a liner where the webbing comes out, I highly suggest that you take the webbing out before you put in the neckband because it just saves you a lot of pain. Okay, so I'm getting good at this now. You flip the buckle up, you go from the outside through the tooth part. up and then out through the smooth part of the buckle and that gets a nice grip so it doesn't want to come loose and the same theory applies on all of them except I'm going to do one thing I'm going to step off camera So sometimes when you're doing these neck bands, the end is frayed like that. And you know, don't 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 worry about it. You just take your shears and just give it a little haircut, and that'll give you something to work with. It's not taking anything off of it. There's plenty of room left. So from the outside, I have to tell myself this every time. It's like you can do. You can do this as many times as you want, and I still have to tell myself, flip the buckle up against the liner body, go through the tooth part from the outside, then bring some, go through the smooth part from the inside. There, snug as a bug. All right, once again, last one, flip the buckle up, Go through, let me give this a little snippy. Go through 
the teeth from the outside. A little tab. And then from the inside, go out through the smooth side. Another thing I didn't I didn't mention this before is these buckles. They're not set so tight that they don't pivot. You can see how I pivoted this straight up and down. I like to do is up. I pivot them back just a little bit, like this. And that way they just. Did you catch that? So this thing here, you can you can pivot it straight up. I like to pivot it kind of at a back angle like that. So that way this just rides. It's just, you know, it's just aesthetics. I just like it. Okay, again, here's the web kit. It's got the three buckles. I take the center buckle, go to the back of the liner, snap it down. Just like that. Go to the side. Come on now. Really? There we go. Can hear it kind of click. Now, this is an infantry helmet. <laughs> Even the post-war airborne helmets, they, they did not use the pop type web kit. And that reason should be obvious to everybody. Um, even this era, so the, the, the post 80s helmet for airborne, it would be a parachutist helmet. They did not use the pop out web kit um, for reasons that should be obvious. And that would be is you don't want the web kit to pop out when you're jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. All right, so even though the uh, infantry version, hang on a minute. Even though the infantry version went with this kit, the parachutist version did not. They still use the A washer style and <clears throat> use the permanently attached webbing. That one didn't want to make a little snap sound. There we go. Let's see. I want to try it. Nah, it there we go. Um, I actually have one right here. Oh. So this is these these two helmets are from the same era. Except this one is airborne parachutist. And you can see here's the chin cup. Here's the uh, A yoke. Um, the chin strap is different. And then you can see that they, the web kit did not pop out. It was riveted in. So here's, here's uh, airborne infantry. Same era. A little bit different. All right, let's get that sweatband in, and that's it. So I'm gonna start to I'm gonna start to wind it down. I I've been watching myself over here to my right, and <clears throat> I don't know how you guys and girls can do it because, from what I can see, <laughs> it's a sight to behold. But uh, that aside, I thought that I'd be able to see your comments. And I can't. So next time I'll try and prepare myself a little better for that. Because I really thought it'd be fun just to be able to um, see the comments and, and respond to them right away. I guess my eyes aren't what I thought. Anywho, I'll fix that next time. Um, there's a couple other helmet assemblies I want to do yet. I do have to assemble a Vietnam era helmet today. They they look basically they're the same, just different enough to be interesting. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. But I am going to assemble a few um, on camera so that I can show you how to get the um, the Mitchell helmet cover, one of the low boys. Um, on a helmet without making a slit for the chin strap. And, and some of you are like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Some of you are like, sweet, can't wait because you do know what I'm talking about. 
And that's just the mystery of Jammer Inc. But anyways, here you go. So there's one. Looks good. Here's another one. Don't they look cool when they're stacked up? I love it. All right, thanks for hanging in there. And um, hopefully, hopefully this will be a nice visual aid. I'll post this video permanently on my Facebook page so that it can be referenced in groups or laughed at, um, whatever, whatever it is you, you like to do with these um, after the fact. But I wanted to show you how to assemble a post-war helmet, some of the uh, uh, tips and tricks. And um, again, to, just to close, um, Big Red put up a blog about, the, about this era helmet on sun, last Sunday. So on my Facebook page, if you look just a couple posts below this video, you'll see it. Um, I think it's called something about accessory or accessory. I really apologize. I do these things, I do them on the fly. I woke up this morning, I had no idea I was gonna be doing this. I'm always ill prepared. It's part of my charm. Okay, all right, you guys, I'm gonna look at some comments. I'll hit up all the pertinent ones. Those of you who thoroughly made fun of me, I appreciate it as always. And uh, again, voila, we'll see y'all later. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out.